Okay, so we've talked about how did the ancient Greeks explain motion, and then we also talked about how did Galileo explain motion. So now we want to fast forward to the time of Sir Isaac Newton. And so notice that he's born in 1642, which is the same year that Galileo died. And so he used a lot of Galileo's ideas in order and formulated them into his uh, laws of motion. So first he came up with the idea of a force. A force is going to be a push or a pull. So if you have a refrigerator and you want to move it, you have to push on it. If you're playing tug of war, you pull on the rope. We've already looked at gravity and gravity pulls down. So it's another example of a force. We're going to abbreviate force with a capital letter F and then the official metric unit of force is going to be called the Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, and then the abbreviation for a Newton is going to be a capital N. So what can forces do? So the first picture over there shows that a force can change the speed of an object. And so in this picture, it shows a basketball that was being held at a certain height above the floor. And then this is going to be at time t equals zero seconds. And then they drop the ball, and so at the end of one second, let's say that it's located right here. And then at the end of two seconds, the ball is now located here. And then let's go on here. At the end of three seconds, let's say that the ball is located right here. So looking at that picture, what are you noticing? You're noticing that the distance from here to here is going to be smaller than this distance from here to here which in turn is smaller than this distance from here to here. So if it's the same amount of time, but the distance is getting bigger, what else is getting bigger? The speed. So this has a certain speed as it's dropping from here to here, and then it has a higher speed as it's dropping from there to there, and then it has a still higher speed as it's going from here to here. So notice the speed is increasing as it's falling. What's another name for a changing speed? That was an acceleration. So if you recall from the previous segment, we talked about Galileo and how he would take a ball, put it on a ramp, and it accelerated as it fell down. Well, this is straight up and down motion, whereas what Galileo was doing was it was partially sideways motion and up and down motion at the same time as it was going down the ramp. But it still was accelerating. Okay, the second picture shows that an object can change its direction as a result of a force. So if you've got a ball that is going in this direction and it gets hit by another ball that's going in this direction, then after they collide, uh, and let's say the two balls stick together, they might go off in yet another direction. So that forces can cause objects to change the direction in which they're moving. The third picture over there shows mountains. And so just to give you an idea for how powerful forces are, I chose this picture here. So if you take a geology class, you would learn that carbon dioxide in the air, the stuff that you breathe out, mixes with ocean water and then it forms calcium carbonate which precipitates to the bottom of the ocean and that makes layer after layer after layer of limestone. So this is a sedimentary rock. Now this is not a geology class, so don't worry about this. But this is where limestone comes from. 
notice that the limestone forms flat layers on the bottom of the ocean floor. Now look at that picture there and you'll see that uh, it's the layers are bent like this. So if you look closely at that picture, you'll see the various limestone layers and they've been folded like an accordion. So just imagine the amount of force that it must have taken in order to take this limestone and then compress it and turn it into that picture that you see right there. All right, let's take a break and when we come back we will talk about the fundamental forces of nature.